I decided I would take on this job because I'd never done anything like it before. In a way, that was just it. Uh, the fact that it was Roy Keane, a major figure in the one sport that I really love, an Irish man, a uh, fascinating man, and I'm still not altogether certain why. I think at one level it's obvious, but at other levels not so. But I just thought, well, yeah, if you're going to, you know, I've, I decided to become a bit more open to these opportunities than I would have been maybe 20 years ago, even 10 years ago. I think the first meeting was in Dublin. Uh, we met at a little conference room in a hotel right beside the airport, and a four hour, a four hour session. And really, you know, four hours, if you work an eight hour job, you're thinking, what's the big deal with four hours? But the consequences of those four hours, because you're going away then with four hours worth of recorded material. And um, as I found out, it's about 200 words a minute. So there's a lot of words there. You know, there's a, novel's, there's a novel's worth of words there immediately. So the work, in a way, the, the donkey work, so to speak, came in, you know, using those words. And we met, I'd say on average, about once a week. No, it never occurred. It never happened. Uh, in a way, one of the d delights was his, you know, his candor, his readiness to admit mistakes was just fantastic. Because um, I've read quite, you know, in, in a relatively short space of time. I had read some football books before, but I read quite a lot of them. And a lot of them are only written for fans of the club that the player was attached to. And there's no candor whatsoever, none whatsoever. It's, it's tedious. Even if you're a fan of the particular club, it's kind of tedious. It's nice, but it's tedious. But what I liked particularly was his readiness to admit errors and to learn from those errors and, his, you know, saying things like, and what I would do in future. Because that's, uh, there aren't all that many people who will be quite frank about that. Well, a sequel, it would be the third one. Uh, we'd, we'd both need to do a bit of living, so maybe if it was 12 years down the line, he'll be 50-something or other, I'll be 67 or 8. Um, I mean, yeah, so hypothetically, yeah, but I don't, you know, I, I wouldn't be, you know, I wouldn't be waiting up for it. And I, I, I'm kind of reluctant to say never, but I, I, I can't think offhand of another figure in sport or anywhere else that would intrigue me enough to do the job again. And um, I am essentially a novelist who does other things now and again. So, I'd, you know, I'm back working on a novel and it feels nice, you know, so that's, that's what I'd be doing for the foreseeable future.